Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm gonna talk a little bit about the self-publishing industry and some pros and some cons. As some of you know and some of you don't, I self-published two books and so I learned a lot along the way and I'll mention five pros and five cons today. Okay, so pro number one in the self-publishing industry. <laughs> My little bird came to say hi. I forgot to tell you that I have a little bird who um, might squeak in the background and you might hear her and she also might come say hi. So this is my little bird, my little canoeer. For those of you listening on audio, it's a little canoeer who's a little bit bigger than a parakeet and she came say, to say hi in the video. All right, give me a sec to put her back and I'll be right back. Okay, so pro number one, creative control. You have all the creative control that you want. Whatever you want your book cover to look like, it's gonna look like that. Whatever you want the layout to look like, it's gonna look like that. If you want illustrations in your book, you can have them. Now, I've heard some interesting stories from writers who have had a really tough time getting what they want into their book because um, the publishing house doesn't want whatever they want. And uh, of course, the most important thing to creative control is that you get to control whatever you're, you want in your plot, what, however, wherever you want the story to go, it can go. Um, it's, it's kind of well known that both agents and editors and publishing houses could tell you to cut things that you're not happy about cutting. And there's a whole, there's a whole plethora of people that I know that have had to cut and change a lot. And that's actually part of my story of why I just said it's a self-publish because I wanted that creative control because I ran into an interesting situation where I was being told I needed to change a lot about the book and I was just not going, I was not willing to go there. Now, of course, about the cover of the book, that could be, that could be interesting, that could be fun. And I've heard stories of a pub, uh, writer who went through the publishing world, the traditional publishing world, had a publishing house put a dragon on our cover and there were no dragons in the story um, because I guess they thought it was just gonna sell. <laughs> I've heard, you know, I've heard other stories where I actually knew a gal who's a writer who went with a small publishing house and she um, ended up really disliking her cover because she said, you know, there were, there were issues basically with the cover and she was really trying to communicate with the publishing house, trying to explain her point of view and why she thinks another direction would have been better. And they just ended up not listening to her and doing whatever they wanted. And the end result, um, she was just really not pleased with what the book looked like. Now, again, with all the horror stories that I'm telling you right now, I do want to make a small caveat of the fact that not all publishing houses, not all editors, not all agents, hashtag not all, um, basically not everyone in this industry, in the traditional publishing industry is evil by any means. I know some really lovely people and self-publishing just one of those things that you decide if it's right for you. It's not a right, it's not a wrong, it's just... Sometimes it's a circumstantial thing and you decide to go with it and maybe you'll decide one day you'll come back to the tra traditional publishing route like I am. I'm actually trying to pursue a career through the traditional publishing route now. I'm trying to find an agent, trying to find an editor all over again for a completely different book. But um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to let you guys know that it's not hands down across the board these stories all the time. Okay, so pro number two, you get to have fun creating your work. Um, I know this is going to be very similar to creative control, but you actually, like I'm a very creative person, I love to draw, and I loved creating my, my cover. 
I went into a bookstore and I looked at all the covers and I found the ones that I really liked, the ones that were really popular, and I kind of combined and created my own. And then I sent off the sketch to a fabulous graphic designer and he brought it to life. And it was really, really, really exciting to see that, to see my vision come to life. So pro number two is that it's really, really fun. It's really fun to see everything, like all your geekiness and your imagination just come to life. Because again, sometimes I get stifled under a big publishing house. And I did want to show you my covers. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So we have this one. This is the first book that I self-published. And I, for those who are listening on audio, I'm sorry. Um, but it basically, it's kind of like this, uh, the gray, the colors are yellow slash orange slash red. And there's a border around the book. And then there's a gal in the middle who's walking towards this faraway citadel. And there's a script that's embedded in the border. And this script is a script that I made up, essentially. And it became part of the whole book, part of the whole story. And I really enjoyed all of it. I enjoyed making up the script. I enjoyed sketching, like I said, the cover. And then seeing it come to life was really, really fun. And then book number two is this one right here. Um, and this one has a different color scale. It's kind of like green to blue. And there's a gal again in the middle who's walking towards a pyramid now in the center. And there's a, the border is pretty much the same, but the script is different. And this is actual, this is, I didn't make this up. This is Acadian. So that was really fun too find the Acadian script and put it onto the covers. So yeah, have fun with it. Go wild, do whatever you want. Since you do have all the creative control, you get to also enjoy it. Okay, so pro number three is a faster timeline. As some of you know, and some of you I guess will learn, the publishing industry likes to take their sweet time. So if you actually end up if, if an agent even likes your work, they might sit on it for a few months before they decide to go with it. Then they'll have you do some edits, and that could take a few months. And then they'll send it out to editors from publishing houses, and then the editors could sit on it for a few months. And then even if they decide to go with you, they'll also take time, do some edits. So basically, it's a really long process. I mean, <clears throat> You cannot think that this is going to be like, oh, two month kind of thing. No, this is, this is like a year, two, just, it's a long process. And that's, that's even take, not taking into account all the querying time before you actually find an agent who will be interested. So, you know, buckle in, bucko, it's a process. Now, the pro to the self-publishing is that you get to speed it up. You, d you get to control this time, this time frame and publish a lot faster. So something that probably would have taken me a couple of years took me about a year because I published both books within the same year. And I actually knew somebody who was older and she, she decided to self-publish predominantly because of the time frame, because she's older and she was just saying, I don't have time to wait. I don't have time to wait for, to find an agent. I don't have time to wait to find an editor. And basically she decided that she was just gonna do it on her own and that was her, that was, that was just the route that she chose to do. So yeah, this could be a huge um, reason for why you decide to self-publish. Okay, so pro number four, you have full rights to this book. You, nobody owns you basically, no, no publishing house will control your story. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but actually it is a big deal because when, so, depending on the contract, it all depends on the contract, but I've heard stories of where publishing houses actually own not just the story itself, not the work, but the world that the story is created and the characters. And so if you ever want, if you ever wanted to do something like 
write a different storyline in the same world or take the characters and put them in a different world or time or something like this, you can't do that because they control unless they okay it, of course. So basically, yeah, you own all the rights and you can do whatever you please. And that kind of leads into pro number five. And that is because you own the book, all the profits go to you. Um, I should say, of course, not all the profits in terms of if you're, if you're printing the book, then there is, a, there is a fee that whoever you're going with to print the book through Amazon or through another distributor, they're usually distributing centers that actually print your books on demand. Um, you do have to pay them to do that. So it's not like it's completely all yours because you have to pay for these things, but you do collect a bigger percentage of the profit, of course, than if you had an agent and if you had an editor and a publishing house, of course, they collect their fair share. Basically, profits are yours after you pay Amazon or whoever else is doing your ebook for the ebook fee and, of course, the um, the distributor. Now there is another side to that coin and I'll get to that on the cons, li uh, cons list. Okay, so now time for the cons. Con number one, no one wiser is holding your hand and guiding you into the light and telling you this is the right decision and this is the wrong decision. If that's what you want, this is not a path for you. You have to do your own research all the time. You have to be very diligent. You have to just you have to talk to as many people as you can, watch as many videos as you can, read as many articles as you can, and just, just absorb as much information as possible and just go for it and hope that the decisions that you made are the good decisions or the best decisions. Um, so, and this bleeds into con number two, which is you must do all your own advertising. So not only is there someone not wiser than you or more experienced, I should say, maybe they're not necessarily wiser, but they're definitely more experienced in the publishing world. So there's also nobody more experienced than you in the publishing world who is advertising you, who's representing you, who's booking all your book signing deals. None of that is happening. You have to be your own cheerleader. You have to, you have to do your own advertising. And this, basically means in our social media world today that you have to be very diligent in creating a Twitter and, and using it regularly, following people, having people follow back. You have to create an Instagram and, you know, of course, post there and a Facebook and whatever else you want to do. You can do a YouTube channel. You can do a podcast. I mean, but you do have to be a go-getter in the advertising realm. You do have to do it. Otherwise, your book is just going to be lost in the shadow of all the other self-published books who are also not doing their own advertising and who are. So it's, you know, it's definitely a thing that you should be very mindful of. And if it's not your thing, if you know in advance that you're just not going to do a Twitter and you're not going to post on Instagram or whatever, then maybe reconsider or consider hiring a social media ma manager, which I actually did do for a few months. I did hire a social media manager and she really did help me boost my numbers in followers. Um, and that was very helpful, but again, that's going to cost you money. So one or the other, you do have to be posting. You have to be out there. Okay. And actually side note to that, um, Nowadays, it's not a guarantee that a self-publishing house will do a lot of advertising for you, especially if it's a small press. I've known authors who had to take care of their own Twitter and their own Instagram um, as well, even with a publishing house. But usually that even small press or small publishing house will book some kind of engagement with the audience for you, you know, book signings, some kind of events, booths, that sort of thing. Um, 
uh, on this side of the coin of the self-publishing world, you have to do all that on your own. Okay, so con number three. You can't get into big bookstores like Barnes and Nobles or can't get onto the New York Times bestselling list. And that might not be a problem for some of you, but that also might be a deterrent for some of you. The whole Barnes and Nobles thing though, you can as a self-published author be on their online platform, but just not in store. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> they don't accept you. <laughs> um, but again, you can be in stores that are local, small book stores, and that might be, that's actually great because you get to support your local community. And, um, but yeah, so the, the bookstore, the being in the big bookstore is not so, it, it might not be such a deterrent, but some people really want the opportunity to be on the New York's Times bestselling list. And you just don't have that opportunity when you're self-publishing. Okay. Okay, con number four, and this is gonna sound a lot like con number two, which is the, um, you have to do your own advertising. You have to do, not just your own advertising, you have to do everything on your own, which means you have to be your own cheerleader, like I said. You have to just constantly be able to put in that effort. You just have to keep showing up for yourself. And that could get a little bit, tiring and in fact very draining so um consider that consider that and let unless you have a very very wonderful support team around you um that will also really really be diligent in helping you because oftentimes what happens with family and friends even if they are very supportive they'll be like yeah you can do it and they might show up for a book um, I don't know, book signing or something, but they're not actually going to, they're not going to book it for you. They're not going to do all these little, tid, like all these little dr grunge work that you have to do on your own. And that might be tiring and it might deter some people. If you already are low on energy, this might not be the path, the path for you. Okay, so con number five, and the last con is that even though you get all the profits or majority of the profits, you actually have to put in a lot more money in the initial cost, right? So you have to put in the money to, to the editor and then to the proofreader. And then you have to put in the money for the graphic designer and the book cover, and of course, then the layout designer. And then you have to, um, after all that is done, because that already could add up, depending on how much you're willing to, to spend on a graphic designer. And I might do um, another episode on where I talk about where I found my graphic designer, because I think that would help actually give you quality work but not make you spend a lot of money <laughs> so basically after all that is done so you have your book but then you you have to actually so you have to buy a sample okay of the book once you once you have to pay money to be part of amazon you have to pay money to be part of a distributor and then they send you a sample which will cost money and then you look through it and you, you spy any mistakes you have to send it back to maybe the graphic designer or maybe the book layout person and they'll have to alter something which is another pretty penny and then basically you just repeat the steps until you finally get a book that you like and all that every time is money and then of course it even costs money to buy the barcode in the back it costs everything costs money which makes sense you know I, I understand people have to make a living. I'm not complaining, but you have to be prepared for it. And you have to understand that that is something that's going to come out of your pocket. And, um, and eventually, once you even have a finished product that you're proud of, you have to, like I said, advertise. And you might want to hire a social media manager, especially if you have a busy life or if you have children or whatever, you have a career and you just can't have, you can't be, you know, sending three 
tweets a day and three Instagram posts a day, it could get really, really tiring. So um, just food for thought. The fifth con is that the initial costs add up and could be pretty, pretty intense. Okay, guys, um, I think that's it for now. If you have any questions or if you have any comments or if your experience has been different, please leave me a comment in the video. And, and if you have any comments, but you're listening on the podcast, of course, email me, go to my website and send me some comments through my contact form. Uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Doodles.